Motions are made with keyframes, telling the model's bones how to be angled and positioned at a certain frame. In order to know where the bone should be in between frames, interpolation is used. Interpolation is a method of finding new points based on already existing points like keyframes. What makes this interesting for animators is that you can change how the interpolation is calculated using interpolation curves. The interpolation diagram has two axes. The time axis is for the time in frames, starting with the frame of the previous keyframe and ending with the frame of the selected keyframe. The movement axis is for the bone position, starting with the position of the previous keyframe and ending with the position of the selected keyframe. As the frames progress, the position of the bone changes according to the curve. In order to change the shape of the curve, you can move two handle points. Depending on how they are placed, different types of curves can be created, each having different effects and uses. Types of curves. In order to see how the curves influence the motion, you can use the show locus feature. Simply right click on the desired bone and activate locus, while making sure show locus is turned on. This will show where the bone was and will be, creating a red path in the 3D view. How many frames you want to see can be changed in the settings. Linear. The default interpolation curve is the linear curve. Each bone position between the keyframes will have the exact same change in position. While this is the most simple to understand, it is also the most niche one to use, since it makes the motion look robotic and rigid. If you intend to animate a robot, this is perfect, but for living models, the next curve is much better suited. S-curve. This curve is made by moving the bottom left and top right points to the bottom and top middle respectively. This will make the start and end of the motion slower while going fast in the middle. This is closer to how humans move and makes the motion look more dynamic and alive. The S-curve should be set as the default curve which can be done by pressing on the gear icon inside the interpolation curve section. You can also change the curve templates here to your liking. Inverted S-curve. Similar to the normal S-form, the two points are moved to the left and right middle. Now inverted, the start and end are fast while the middle is slow. This curve works well for snappy camera motions, as the transition between camera positions will happen quickly while keeping the actual camera shots slow. The last two curves are also inverted to each other. Speed up and slow down. For speed up, move the points to the bottom right. For slow down, move the points to the top left. As the name suggests, speed up starts slow and gets faster, while slow down starts fast and gets slower. The two curves complement each other well, as they technically behave like an S-curve when put together. What is the best curve? The answer? There is no best curve. Motions are made with more than just one keyframe, making it obvious which default curve was used. In order to make motions that seem believable, you need to combine them together. As an example, when animating a long sweeping move, you would first use speed up to start, then use linear for the long sweep, and then use slow down at the end. This way, there are no weird stops while swinging, as it would be the case when only using the S-curve. As a rule of thumb, you want to slow down when there's a change in direction and speed up afterwards. When the direction doesn't change, it's better for the speed to stay constant, so a linear curve is appropriate. Auto. Even just changing the default interpolation curve from linear to S-curve stops your animation from looking all robotic, but only using the S-curve will make it look weird too. Knowing how to use and combine interpolation curves will make your motion smoother and more pleasant to look at. Try to experiment with the curves yourself and get a feel for when to use what curve.